Good morning. Welcome to the CBS Family Service. It's a delight to have you join us today. If you joined us last week, you know that in the month of May, CETAM is going through and focusing on the church and politics. Why so? Well, if you live in Kenya or you're resident here in this nation, you know that in a couple of months, less than 100 days, we'll be going to a national election. And to take us through the second part of this series is the head of uh, social action and advocacy here at CETAM, Reverend Patrick Kuchio. Rev, you're, you're going to be dealing today with the subject of the Kenyan scenario as far as politics is concerned. Yes, sir. There's this sense in which it's like ever since 20, 2007, every uh, election cycle is sort of approached with fear, trepidation, mm -hmm. uh, almost as if to say, let those guys sort it out by themselves. What, what role do we as Christians, or should we as Christians, have in engaging in this space, especially in Kenya? Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Dr. Kwame. Um, it's sad that politics seems to start the worst of our emotions, yes, sad. particularly here in Kenya, mm -hmm. but also in some parts of the world. I yeah. not mention where, but mm -hmm. we've seen for ourselves. Yes. Um, what role do we have to play as Christians? I think, mm. number one, we have a civic duty. Amen. Uh, to be involved in matters of government. Mm. Uh, we have a divine duty to follow, worship the Lord, uh, follow him mm. wholeheartedly. But Amen. we have a responsibility mm. as well. Jesus would put it this way. Mm. Give to Caesar what belongs to uh, Caesar. Amen. Because he lived in a very oppressive, non-democratic uh, political environment. Right. But he was acutely aware about his responsibility and our responsibility mm. to be engaged. Mm. So I would say we have a civic duty. Mm -hmm. uh, the civic duty requires that you and I should actually participate as mm. voters. Mm. We should participate in determining who comes to office, but yes. not just who comes to office, mm. holding them accountable. Amen. But I think Amen. the place it begins is for us agreeing. Mm. What are those attributes that we should be looking mm. out for mm. in leaders so that we put right leaders in office? Because mm -hmm. this... Uh, leaders don't just happen. Mm -hmm. God would use men and women yes. and keeping with Romans 13 Amen. to actually put authorities in office. Amen. But he uses the ballot. And so yes. you and I must show up at the ballot Amen. to exercise that responsibility. Wonderful. Yes, you know, you, you, you painted a picture uh -huh. that really shakes up this notion for us as believers that politics is taking place around us. Mm -hmm. We're in church, yes. you know, we're worshiping, we're hearing the word of God, we're being yeah. taught, we're being discipled as it were. But you've just painted a picture now that we need to take our relationship with God yes. and put it on display in this space, in this political space. Yes. Um, what sort of challenge would you give to a believer who says, that's for out there and I'm focusing on God right here? <laughs> very good. Um, it's, it's very confusing and very deceptive mm. uh, for us to imagine uh, that we have no relevance in this world. Mm. Um, Jesus was very clear when he said, you are not of this world, you are in this world, but you're not, you're not oh, of this world. Right. I think once we appreciate that we have dual citizenship mm -hmm. and that every citizen yes. has a responsibility, yes. rights and responsibilities, mm -hmm. uh, I have a right to be a citizen of Kenya, mm -hmm. I have responsibilities of being exactly. a citizen of Kenya. Mm -hmm. I have a right to being a citizen of heaven mm -hmm. and I have responsibilities as well. Amen. So we must exercise those rights and responsibilities mm -hmm for both kingdoms, yes. here and there. So I would say to you who imagines <laughs> that that is for them, mm. you are actually misrepresenting your identity wow. because Jesus says, yes. you are the salt mm -hmm. and you are the light. Amen. Amen. So you remove salt from the equation, mm. uh, decay begins to happen, right. tastelessness happens, right. uh, you remove light from the equation, mm -hmm. darkness, darkness begins to flourish. Right. So God is counting on you and I, Amen. who is the salt on the earth, mm. uh, the salt and the light to make mm. the difference. So Amen. Um, I want to make a difference. Yes. Because I know 
But God is counting on Amen. me to make a difference Amen. in my world, right. in my sphere of influence. Right, mm -hmm. right. Wonderful. As you welcome our first time uh, visitors and guests, and, and just say something to the uh, our, our Kenyan audience in particular, where we're going to be uh, making very important choices in less than 100 days. Uh, is there something you want us to be thinking about, praying about, as we welcome our friends? It's such an honor for us to come to another general election in less than 100 days. And my appeal to us as Kenyans is to exercise a lot of sobriety, uh, exercise a lot of peace. Let's accommodate one another. We may be coming from different political persuasions, but let's never allow our political persuasions to divide us or to stir the worst of our emotions. It is possible for us to turn that tide where every five years, mm. Kenya is like resetting. It's like we are rebooting. Let's this time round refuse to be agents of harm and destruction. Let's refuse to be agents of hatred and vitriol, mm. Mm. whether in person or in online spaces. Mm. Let's choose to be the salt and the light of the world. Let's give hope. Amen. Let's give light where there's darkness. Let's give uh, solutions where there's decay mm. because God is counting on you and I. Amen. A very warm welcome to the CBS Family Service today. Thank you for making time to be with us this morning. Here at CBS, we always look forward to a special time in worship and in the Word of God with you, our very special guests. My name is Pastor Tim Gisharu, and I'll be serving as your moderator today. We have a great service and worship experience lined up for you today after praise and worship led by our amazing team here on CBS. We have lots happening in the service, including a special message from our very own Head of Social Action and Advocacy, Reverend Patrick Kuchio, with a very special message preparing the citizens of Kenya for the upcoming national elections. Yes, it is national elections. We welcome all of you listening to this service on Hope FM and those of you watching uh, uh, us on Hope TV and all uh, uh, of you watching on Sitam Church online channels every Sunday at this local time. Our hashtag today is hashtag you are the light of the world. Let me take it again. Our hashtag is hashtag you are the light of the world. More about that later in the service. Well, as always, let's get started with praise and worship. Help me welcome our amazing CBS worship team to lead us into the time of the presence of God. Welcome. Amen, hallelujah. What another Sunday to sing praises to the Lord, to sing praises to the King of Kings, hallelujah. And we are here to give him all the praise and glory. The greater the storm, the louder we shall sing to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hey, Lord, we sing praises to your name. Can we sing together? There's a song that cannot be contained. There's a shout that breaks through every chase. God, we won't be silent. There's a faith that rises through the flames. There's a joy that chases the dark away. God, we won't be silent. No matter how greater the storm is, we say, and the greater the storm, the louder our storm. We say that again, and the greater the storm. Voices make your praise so glorious, glorious. We lift our voices, lift our voices, make your praise so glorious. We lift our voices, we lift our voices, lift our voices, make your praise so glorious, glorious. We lift our voices, lift our voices, make your praise so glorious. Yes, we are raising our faith in this place. Faith that changes, that breaks every chain. Hallelujah. Hey, there's a faith to say, there's 
house of faith that rises through the flames. There's a joy that chases the dark away. God, we won't be silent. Can you spell that again? Because we cannot be defeated in Jesus' name. There's a faith that rises through the flames. There's a joy that chases the dark away. God, we won't be silent. Because the greater the storm, the louder the storm. The greater the storm, the louder the storm. We say that again. And the greater the storm, the louder the storm. Yeah, we say. We lift our voices, lift our voices. Make your praise it's so glorious, glorious. We lift our voices. Lift our voices, make your praise so glorious. We lift our voices, we lift our voices, lift our voices, make your praise so glorious, glorious. We lift our voices, lift our voices, make your praise so glorious. Lord, we lift our voices, lift our voices, give praise, lift our voices, make your praise so glorious, glorious. Oh, we lift our voices. Make your praise so glorious. We lift our voices. We lift our voices. Make your praise so glorious. We lift our voices. We lift our voices. Lift our voices. Make your praise so glorious, glorious. We lift our voices. Lift our voices. Make your praise so glorious. Yes, God, we lift our voices to you, oh God. We praise you, King of Kings, because you deserve all the praises and all the glory, God. We honor your name, God, as we sing praises to you. And all our hallelujahs belong to you, oh God. Hallelujah. They all belong to you, oh Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Put your hands together, even at home, and praise the King of Kings. together let it rise let it rise an everlasting fame a fire for your name let it rise let it rise a holy offering that's burning for within me so that again let it rise let it rise an everlasting fame a fire for your name let it rise let it rise let it rise a holy offering that's burning from within. Shine bright, we say. Shine bright and lift up your name. We lift your name high. Say, all our hallelujahs be yours. All our hallelujahs be yours. From the altar of our hearts, oh God, the flames of worship rise. Come on, just put your hands together for the King of Kings. Lord, we give you all the hallelujahs, Lord, because you deserve them more, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus, because you deserve it, we say. Lift you high, lift you high, an everlasting flame, a fire for your name. Lift you high, lift you high, you say, a holy offering. There's burning from me. We say that again. Lift you high, lift you high. Yeah. An everlasting flame, a fire for your day. Lift you high, lift you high, lift you high. A holy offering. There's burning from me. Shine bright, we say. Shine bright and lift up your name. We lift your name high. All our hallelujahs be yours.
worship you. We make you our song, oh God. Oh Jesus, our song of victory and freedom, Jesus. And as we sing, Jesus, you're doing something new in that every chain is broken. Father, we thank you because you're a good God. You're a God who assured us of our freedom that every chain is broken. In your presence, in your presence, every chain is broken because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We choose to worship you this morning, our Father. We choose to worship you Elohim, eternal God, creator of the universe. You are the God of the mountain. You are the God of the valley. Even when you are, we are disadvantaged, you are the God of our the valley. Even when we are at an advantage point, you are the God of the mountain. This morning we choose to worship you for who you are. You have revealed yourself to your people as I am that I am. This morning we will choose to worship you because the Bible says, that everyone who comes to you must believe that you are and that you are the rewarder of those who diligently seek you. We choose to say that you are eternal God. You are Jehovah Kadesh, the Lord who sanctifies, the Lord who makes holy. And this time we come again in confidence and to for, for our sins to be forgiven because you are a righteous God. You are a holy God. You are a consuming fire, sweet spirit of God. Thank you for convicting us of our sins, righteousness, and even unto judgment. And we come to a holy God, seeking to be holy because He is holy, because He is holy. Jesus Christ became the, the sacrifice that satisfied the wrath of God on our behalf. He became seen on our behalf so that we may attain the righteousness, the imputed righteousness of God. And for that, Lord, we are very grateful. And therefore we declare that every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. Every chain even of poverty is broken. Every chain even on economic depression is broken. And we choose to rise up like an eagle with Christ, oh God, in the freedom of Christ that has been assured on us even through the Holy Spirit. We give you glory, we give you honor. We bring our nation to you, O oh God. You know Kenya, Kenya belongs to you. Even this during this year of elections, O oh God, Kenya belongs to you. We uplift Kenya to you, O oh God, because we know that you love Kenya. You love Kenyans and everyone who is in Kenya. And even, O oh God, everyone watching from wherever they are watching, O oh God, across the world, O oh God, you are the God of your people. You love your people and we know that you are coming down. You have heard the cry of your people. You are coming down and you are relieving the people, O oh God, to righteousness, O oh God. You are relieving your people to the freedom that is assured in Christ Jesus. So Lord, receive all the glory, even as we worship you, even as we hear your word, O oh God, receive all the glory. And may that, O oh God, be an assurance, O oh God, to us on how we should walk. In Jesus' name, we pray, trust, and believe. Amen. And the people of God say, Amen, Amen. You can say Amen right there, and you can do even those emojis. And what a great time in worship this morning. Many thanks to our anointed worship team, you would want to do a, a clap, an emoji right there, right at home or wherever you are at or wherever you're listening us from. If you have been blessed by this team today, why not say something? Say something. 
in that chat section on Facebook or YouTube. Don't forget to use our hashtag today, like we said earlier, hashtag you are the light of the world. You are the light of the, of the world. Once again, if this is your first time with us on CBS, we love visitors, we love first timers, we would like to say a warm welcome and please feel right at home. We especially want to welcome our friends joining us uh, on this broadcast in Namibia, in America, in Romania, in East Timor. We mention these places because specifically uh, because we have a growing ministry presence there. But of course, you are always very welcome wherever you are watching us from in the world. We are delighted to have you with us today. Well, if you haven't done so before, please subscribe on our YouTube channels and um, click on that bell icon for notification, for reminders, for reminders for the future videos. And remember to use the hashtag as you tweet today. Once again, our hashtag is hashtag you are the light of the world. Why not engage with us by posting something on Twitter and on Instagram? Let us know your thoughts and even the comments you have about the worship uh, as we worship with us today, especially if you are live in Kenya or you are part of, of the global diaspora uh, of Kenyans. Well, we will be welcoming our speaker for today, Reverend Kuchio, for the word of God, in a little while, sharing a great lesson, focusing on our responsibility as Christians to fulfill the civic duty to the glory of our God. Now, as we continue, here is some important notices about our ministry, so please watch this clip. We are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS Family Service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM, or for those of you streaming live on our Sitem Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We welcome you to join us on Wednesday for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m. broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM and on all the Sitem Church online social media platforms. We invite you to send in your prayer requests before or even during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. Planning to get married? We encourage all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly with the Ministry of Health guidelines, so please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. We express our deepest condolences to all who are bereaved. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. We will also conduct the burial service on site according to the current Ministry of Health protocols as well. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitem Church offices are open between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday to Friday, strictly observing all current Ministry of Health protocols. Please remember that all our assemblies around Kenya are open for in-person services. Seating capacity is no longer limited, but all other Ministry of Health protocols still apply. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitem Broadcast Service. Thanks for paying attention to these notices. God bless you, and please enjoy the rest of the service. The Sita Missions Department will be running medical camps from May to September, themed Perfecting Health, Radiating His Glory. We invite volunteer medics to register for the medical camp drive according to dates available or preferred mission station. Archers Post the 9th to the 13th of May, Marsabit, Gororukesa, Matarba, the 7th to the 10th of June, Kargi, the 20th to the 25th of June, Loyangalani, 19th to the 24th of September, 
Alterot, 26th to the 30th of September. We are currently receiving donations of medical supplies, cash and in kind for the communities in the various mission stations. Partner with us today through the pay bill number 693371, account Medical Camp or call 0709-861-165 during working hours or email missions at sitem.org for registration and inquiry. Donations are receivable in any SITAM assembly near you. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. Greetings from the Evangelism and Outreach Department. Christians around the world are getting ready to go. The month of May in the Christian cycles has been put aside as the Go Movement Month. From villages in remote Africans to large churches in North Africa and North America, Christians in both South, East and Central Africa and all over the world are preparing to share the gospel. In Kenya, churches and ministries are coming together to reach and evangelize in the estates, streets, markets, and the enriched tribes in Northern Kenya and other parts of the world. As you already know, last year we had a very successful four days evangelism here in Sitam, and many of us got involved. This month of May 25th has been designated as a Global Movement Day. We want to encourage each and every one of our members and believers to reach out and evangelize one person. Jesus Christ wants to use you in this decade of our evangelization that many may come to know him. Let us come and go together. Christians around the world are answering to the call to pray, donate, and learn to share their faith. We have a unique opportunity here at CTAM to be trained in evangelism. The School of Evangelism is ready and geared to train us in this area. We encourage you to gather a group, the safari groups, the youth groups, or outreach teams to learn how to share your faith. In Sitam, we believe that giving is part of the ways of worshipping God. And for that, allow me to pray, even as you consider how you are going to give. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because the Bible teaches in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, that you are the one who gives us, make, help, gives us power to make wealth. And Father, we come to you, O oh God, acknowledging that very fact that you have enabled us to create wealth. And as we give back this to you, we give it with thanksgiving out of what you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, please watch this clip on giving. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work here at SIDM. We believe that God, who sees in secret, will reward you openly and abundantly. We have a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you happen to attend and even for our visitors. You can give via mobile money through the platforms M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933934. For the account name, please indicate the SITM assembly you attend. If you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of any SITM assembly, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all other SITM payable numbers remain operational. If you would like to make direct bank deposits, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. Account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, Cooperative Bank, University Way Branch and the account number is 011. 2806176390 the swift code k c double o k e n a if you prefer to give through our website kindly visit www.sitem.org click on the give tab and follow the instruction for online giving once again we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift every tithe every offering and every generous material support god bless you It's now time to hear the word of God. And like I had mentioned, our preacher for the day is no stranger to CBS Family Service, Reverend Patrick Cuccio. is the head of 
the Social Action and Advocacy Department here at CITAM. The title of the sermon today is Church and Politics, the Kenyan Scenario. I am convinced you will be wonderfully blessed. Once again, the hashtag today is hashtag you are the light of the world. Welcome, Reverend Kuchio. Thank you, Pastor Tim. It's good, so to, good have to see you. you. Thank you, thank you. May I pray for you? Oh, sure, please. I'll appreciate that. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time because you have said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Lord. We thank you for Reverend Kuchio, and as he speaks to us, may our hearts hearken to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Tim. You're welcome. And thank you, one and all. Thank you for joining us this Sunday morning on CBS as we share on this critical subject, church and politics, the Kenyan scenario. My name is Patrick Kuchio, as you've been told, and I bring greetings from my wife, Maggie, and our two girls, Shina and Amani. It's a joy to be back on CBS to bring God's word this day. I draw your attention to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, and we'll read from verse 13 through to verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 through to verse 16. And I read, the Bible says, from the NIV version of the Bible, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. I speak this Sunday morning on the subject, church and politics, the Kenyan scenario. Church and politics, the Kenyan scenario. There is widespread view that politics is dirty, dangerous, and has its owners. Should the church be involved in politics is an age-old question that has colored the thinking and imagination of many Christians. Many responses to this fundamental question have over the years been nuanced with some convoluted definitions of what politics is and consequently determine whether Christians should be involved in politics or not. Now the debates around this question have convinced many Christians that our role in politics is to be apolitical, neutral, or nonpartisan. It may help at this point to pause a little bit and briefly interrogate the origin of politics. The history of political thought can be traced back to antiquity with seminal works by great thinkers such as Plato and Aristotle, those great Greek philosophers. Some political scientists have ventured a definition of politics and say that politics is basically the process by which scarce resources are allocated within a social unit, be it a city, a state, a nation, or an organization. Let me repeat that again. But politics is the process by which scarce resources are allocated within a social unit, be it a city, a state, a nation, or an organization. If that is your working definition of politics, I am not very sure you want to remain apolitical, 
neutral, and nonpartisan. Not for me. You see, politics is at the center of the story of Jesus. His historical life here on earth ended with a political execution. His death was testament to his engagement with the politics of his day. Christ's frequent use of the phrase, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God reverberated in the political space of his day. His audience were very familiar with other kingdoms like the kingdom of Herod and the kingdom of Rome. His triumphant entry into Jerusalem, mounted on a donkey, must have shaken the political establishment to the core. His grand entry into Jerusalem on that court symbolized a kingdom of peace in which the weapons of war would be banished. He created a scene at the temple to demonstrate his disapproval of the politics of the day. Jesus wouldn't allow his church to become a den of robbers where the poor were exploited. The object lesson of being whipped and chased out of the temple must have relieved the political establishment for a long, long time. You find that in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verse 13, and also in Mark eleven seventeen 17, and in Luke 19, from verse 46. So like Jesus, our faith must be lived out in every aspect of our daily lives. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we are to remain obedient stewards of God's creation, our faith must find expression in our daily lives. John Stott, in his book, Issues Facing Christianity Today, argues that, and I quote, no single word captures more accurately or expresses more eloquently the modern sense of impotence than the word alienation. You see, John Stott argues that when the affairs of a nation are left unguided by the principles of the kingdom of God, then ordinary men and women shall inevitably suffer alienation, whereby the powerful oppress the weak, the rich exploit the poor, and the majority overrun the minority. This was never God's order. You see, suffering people, and there are many in our world and in your world as well, are waiting for a man and a woman of God to speak and act on their behalf so that they are relieved of their suffering. Could you be that person that God is counting on to engage on behalf of those that are suffering? Therefore, I am persuaded that Christians cannot by any shred of imagination afford to give into a spirit of alienation. We must engage. We are God's instruments that must engage politics and influence it for the good of all. But the big question remains. Why should the church be at the forefront of political engagement? That is a question I must ask you. Why should the church be at the forefront of political engagement? Going back to our text, which is part of the Sermon of the Mount. Now, the Sermon of the Mount has held a primary place in the teachings of the church throughout the centuries. But even though it has enjoyed such popularity, it has not always been understood in the same way. Various scholars have regarded the sermon from numerous and even quite different and conflicting points of view. But suffice it to say that the Sermon on the Mount clearly sets out the tempo, the tone of Christ's ministry. From our text, you will note Jesus uses four images to describe his would-be followers. Salt, light, a city on a hill, a lamp, all to describe his would-be followers, you and I. The usage of the definite article 
the is not worth it. When he says, you are the salt of the earth, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Now, Matthew 5, verse 13 and 14 can best be restated as follows. Ye and ye only are the salt of the earth. Ye and ye only are the light of the world. Ye and ye only are the salt of the earth. Ye and ye only are the light of the world. In other words, God is counting on you and I to make a difference in the world he has allowed us to live in. Ye and ye only are the salt of the earth. Ye and ye only are the light of the world. God is counting on you. Will you rise to the occasion and make a difference? See, the big question remains. Why should the church be at the forefront of political engagement? I would like to make three observations. And I believe that you will be persuaded by the end of this message to engage and to engage gainfully in matters politics. Why should the church be at the forefront of political engagement? Number one, to regulate healthy hygiene in our political discourse. To regulate healthy hygiene in our political discourse. Hear these words of Jesus. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You will agree with me that the use of salt in food never makes the meal foody, but salty. Let me try that again. You will agree with me that the use of salt in food never makes a meal foody. It makes it salty. Just as salt regulates the taste of food in any dish. So have you and I been called to regulate the temperature in our spheres of influence through godly living and engagement? Now, before I lose you, just struck with me. The perfect illustration that comes to mind is the contrast between a thermometer on one hand and a thermostat on the other. Okay? A thermometer and a thermostat. Now, a thermometer tells you about the temperature in the room. It records and relays details about temperature. On the other hand, a thermostat regulates the temperature in the room. It helps control the temperature by making small adjustments to heat or cool the room. If it gets too cold in the room, the thermostat kicks in, adjusts, and it begins to warm up the room. You and I must be like that thermostat where we invade political spaces and conversations, not just to relay propaganda and that vitriol that flows with such abundance, but to challenge divisive and rotten rhetoric that always dominates our conversations as Kenyans. I wonder why politics stars the worst of our emotions as Kenyans. I am challenging you not to be a thermometer Christian, but to be a thermostat Christian. You see, a thermometer Christian is the one who just captures details, relays the same, but does nothing about it. But a thermostat Christian is one who will regulate the temperature. You see, a thermostat, a thermometer Christian, sorry, is one who forwards everything that lands on their social media spaces without applying their minds to critical evaluation by asking basic questions such as, is it true? Is it necessary? Is it beneficial? Those are basic questions that you and I must ask before you attempt to forward anything that lands in your social media spaces. Is it true? 
Is it necessary? Is it beneficial? Is it kind? A thermostat Christian is one who seeks to regulate and promote healthy hygiene in our political discourse. Please note, Jesus never challenged us to become salt or light. He simply said we are. So I did not come this morning to challenge you to be the salt and to be the earth. I'm just here to remind you of your identity. But as to whether you are living out your identity as salt or light is a matter of choice. And I really pray that you choose to be salt and light, that you choose to regulate healthy hygiene in our political discourse. I'm always tickled at the vitriol that I attract every time I go on social media pages just to engage my many followers and friends on social media spaces. But I have determined I will never back off. I will continue regulating. I'll continue asking questions that will cause people to think and to ask probing questions. You and I must live up to our responsibility of regulating healthy hygiene in our political discourse. It has been said that wisdom comes with age. But I've, I've come to realize that at times, wisdom comes unaccompanied. Oh, sorry, age comes unaccompanied. Let me say that again. It's been said that wisdom comes with age. But I've come to realize that at times, age comes unaccompanied. Otherwise, how would you explain the poor hygiene we have in our political space? But God is counting on you and I to regulate that space. So don't shy away from that space. Keep speaking life into that space. The question we are asking is, why should Christians be at the forefront of political engagement? Number one, we have said, to regulate healthy hygiene in political discourse. But secondly, to illuminate God's light amid darkness. To illuminate God's light amid darkness. Hear this, the words of Jesus. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a ball. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Charles Spurgeon, the great preacher, once made a very profound statement amongst his many statements. This is what he said. And I quote, Hear this, ye humble men and women. Ye who have made no figure in society. Ye are the light of the world. If you burn dimly, dimly is the world's light and dense its darkness. End of quote. If you burn dimly, dim is the world's light. I pray that you and I who are followers of Jesus will not allow our light to burn dimly, but we'll allow it to burn brightly because the world is counting on you and I to show the way. See, Jesus emphasized the need of our distinct and godly living when he asserted, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a ball. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. The light that I'm talking about is a kind of light that does not discriminate. It's a kind of light that shines on people regardless of their race, regardless of their tribe, regardless of their creed. There's some kind of light that I see from some political quarters that only shines on a tribal area. That is not the light of God. The light of God shines on everyone, you and I must step into this space and bring the light of God to shine on everyone we interact with. Not just on those from our ethnic extraction, absolutely not, but from everyone. This is the kind of light that Jesus says 
It gives light to everyone in the house. You see, light and darkness can never coexist. Darkness can never withstand the appearance of light, but always flourishes in the absence of light. Let me say that again. Darkness can never withstand the appearance of light, but always flourishes in the absence of light. You and I cannot afford to be absent in political discourse, in political spaces, because we are the light of the world. Our very disappearance will allow darkness to flourish. I agree with those who say that politics is dark and dirty because you who is the salt and the light, you have vanished from that space. But it's about time you and I rediscovered our place and our calling to be present in political spaces and conversations because we are the salt and we are the light. We must drive out the darkness in the political space and make a difference because it belongs to God. That space also belongs to God. We must bring the truth of God's light to bear on our politics and governance units, lest history judges us harshly, as it will judge those who refuse to denounce slavery in Africa, those who refuse to denounce apartheid in South Africa, those who refuse to denounce racial segregation in the U.S. You and I must be the light of the world. We must bring God's, the light of God's truth to bear and say, this is not of God. Finally, why must we be engaged? Why must we be at the forefront of political engagement? Number one is to regulate healthy hygiene in our political discourse. Number two is to illuminate God's light amidst darkness. But thirdly, to demonstrate God's love to the masses. To demonstrate God's love to the masses. Listen to the words of Jesus. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds, see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Jesus was very practical. He was not a theoretical person. He was a very practical person. He engaged people in the temple. He engaged them in the marketplace. He engaged them by the roadside. He engaged them wherever they were, wherever he met them. Charles Spurgeon said this, and I quote, Christ never contemplated the production of secret Christians, Christians whose virtues would never be displayed, pilgrims who would travel to heaven by night and never be seen by their fellow pilgrims or anyone else. The, end of quote. That was never God's intention. God's intention was that you and I we live our lives in the public space in such a way that everybody will know where you belong. You see, the call to demonstrate God's love to the masses carries with it a divine imperative to be engaged. Therefore, disengagement from matters politics is a misrepresentation of our calling as salt and light. I will repeat that again. Disengagement from matters politics is a misrepresentation of our calling to be salt and light to those politicians who are telling us, hey, church, keep away from politics. We came to tell you this morning, politics is too important to be left to politicians. Absolutely not. We will not keep away from politics because we know what politics is all about. This is a calling we have received from God. It's our civic duty to engage in matters governance and leadership. So we're not backing off. We are engaging. Thought I'd hear an amen from you. It never ceases to surprise me how small quantities of salt can season a whole lot of food. See, the amount of salt is never proportionate with the food in the cooking pot. At least for those of you who know how to cook. It will be very absurd for you to imagine that two cups of rice requires two cups of salt. It doesn't work that way, bro. It doesn't go that way. 
It takes a small amount of salt to season a whole lot of food. It takes just a few grains to demonstrate that food is salty. We should therefore take comfort in the fact that every little word, every little act, every little intention that is demonstrated goes a long way to demonstrate God's love to the masses who are yearning for meaningful impact. You see, for Dr. Martin Luther King, it was just a dream. But that dream brought about a change. That dream transformed the history of American politics and global politics. For Mahatma Gandhi, it was just a mindset, a philosophy. And God used that philosophy to transform the entire subcontinent of India, and not just India, but the entire globe. Just a mindset, a philosophy. For the late Bishop Alexander Muge, it was courage. Courage to stand against the powers that be of the day. That courage gave such a sharp edge to the voice of the church. I could say the same of Bishop Okulo the late, or Bishop Archbishop Dingimana Anzeki. I could say the same of the Reverend Joya. What is it that God has placed in your hands that feels so insignificant like some grains of, of salt? Please allow it to season the food. Please allow it to influence your neighborhood. Allow it to influence your family. Allow it to influence your place of work. You'll be surprised that idea, that thought might be all that your friends are waiting to hear that will turn them around. Why should the church be at the forefront of political engagement? To regulate healthy hygiene in our political discourse. Secondly, to illuminate God's light amidst darkness. Thirdly, to demonstrate God's love to the masses. In closing, let me say this. Christians are citizens of two kingdoms. This world that we live in and the one to come. And we cannot help but engage because it is our civic, it is our moral, it is our divine duty to engage in matters politics. So if you haven't registered as a voter, let me tell you, you are letting down the cause of Christ. You cannot claim to be a Christian and so apolitical, so non involved in the matters of governance about your nation. You must step up to your calling and make a difference. That voter's card is what will make a difference. God is count counting on you. Rise up early and make a choice. Who knows where that choice will land this country in 10 years from now, 20 years from now. See, the Bible contains numerous examples of God's people engaging in politics as part of a holistic approach to ministry that meets practical needs. In the Old Testament, the Bible speaks about government and provides examples of faithful engagement. For example, Joseph and Daniel served in foreign administrations and used their influence to implement policies that benefited society. That was political engagement. The prophet Jeremiah instructed the exiles in Babylon to seek the welfare of their new city, carried away against their will, but they find themselves far away and he tells them, seek the will and the prosperity of this city. They were commanded to pray for the city. They were told, for, if it's, for in its welfare, you will find your welfare. If the city prospers, you will prosper. If Kenya prospers, you will prosper. If Kenya is at peace, you will enjoy peace and reap the fruits of the, of the peace. A thriving society would benefit God's people as well as the city's inhabitants. You and I long for a thriving society. But we must engage to cause that thriving society to happen. In the New Testament, Jesus engaged in holistic ministry. 
caring for the physical and spiritual needs of the people. He fed the hungry. He cared for the sick. Healed those that were unwell. Cleansed the lepers. Paul also advocated for a comprehensive approach to ministry. He says this in Galatians 6 verse 10. As we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. And in Ephesians 2 verse 10, he says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared beforehand for us to do. We have a responsibility. We must engage in politics as we regulate healthy hygiene in our political discourse, as we illuminate God's light amidst darkness, and as we demonstrate God's love to the masses. This is your calling, and I pray that you will respond appropriately this morning. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for reminding us that we are the salt and the light of the world, that we are a city on a hill. The Lord, you are counting on us to make a difference in every space, particularly the space of politics. We ask and pray that as we engage in politics as our civic duty, the Lord, you lead us, you guide us. Lord, to bring to bear your light and that truly will be an extension of your love in this confused space. So I ask and pray that, Lord, as we go into the week, as we engage in conversations, that you will remind us to be faithful stewards who have been called to regulate uh, the political temperatures in that space, to illuminate your word, and Lord, to influence people for your kingdom. We commit ourselves to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I want to invite back our moderator of the day, uh, Pastor Tim uh, Gisharo. Please, welcome. Thank you, Reverend Kuchio, for such a timely word this morning uh, that God has given you. And speaking of church and politics, the Kenyan scenario, mm -hmm. I want to pose a question. Sure. Should Christians, Christians be involved in politics? In fact, that has been the crux of today's message. Looking from the example of Jesus and also from Old Testament uh, saints, Jeremiah the prophet, whether it was Moses, Daniel, they engaged the politics of the day. So you and I have a mandate to engage with the politics of the day. And this has not been given to us by the polit political class. This has been given to us by God. So yes, we must engage politics. Amen. This has not been given us to us by man. It has been given to us as a mandate from God. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you very much. And what a blessing to have you join us for the service today. We are always blessed to have you share your experiences, like the ones we have heard of the Kenyan scenarios of Christians in politics, and your thoughts after worshiping with us today. Please share the link for today's service online with someone you may have, who may have missed out. Send them a link from our online channels on YouTube and even on Facebook. We look forward to seeing you again during the week, especially on Tuesday. Join us on Hope FM, Hope TV, Sitam Church Online, Facebook and YouTube channels at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live. Yes, After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today, and I believe there will be many, will be addressed live by Reverend Kuchio. And join us again on Wednesday when we invite you to join us in our midweek prayer service at 6 p.m. live on Hope FM again, Hope TV, and all our Sitam Church online social media platforms. Our pastors will be praying for your requests, so please send them early. Please keep tweeting and posting. Share your feedback on today's message, and remember to use our hashtag one more time, hashtag you are the light of the world. If you have made a, a decision to follow Jesus Christ as Savior today, please let us know by contacting us on the following WhatsApp number, 0728-221-221 on your screen. 
You will be sure to follow us up on this week. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And for that, allow me to pray as we conclude. May the Lord answer you in your distress. May the God of Jacob protect you. May he answer you from his sanctuary and grant you support. May you trust in the name of the Lord. For some trust in fame, others in power, others in wealth. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God, the God of fame, the God of power, the God of wealth. And may he grant you peace in all that you do in Jesus' name. And all the people of God said, amen, amen. God bless you.